So what we have here is Dwarf 2 that actually participated on the crowdfunding campaign. So this is apparently a very portable um, and also a versatile telescope device. Now, as you would imagine, telescope devices are normally quite big um, and they are not that portable. So I thought that was quite attractive. And also it has a tracking system as well uh, by using your smartphone uh, app as well. So that sounds really interesting indeed. But what I'm not convinced about is the quality that you can get. I have seen some of the YouTubers and also the screenshot on the crowdfunding campaigns or related articles that you can actually get a decent photo of the moon and I'm not really convinced. So I want to find out for myself. So enough said, let's get into the unboxing. So here it goes. Let's cut it, cut it, cut it by using my Higono Kami knife. Rotate it. Yep, as I predicted, there's another box. It's quite good, good weight, you know? It's cool, isn't it? Wow, look at that. All right, so we got the C further, the instruction manual box, I presume. Now you can take it out. And below that is the actual Dwarf 2 unit that I'm very convinced the device is inside here. So with the actual instruction box itself, wow, look at that. Looks like different types of lenses that you can get. I believe this is like a component. Okay, so we're gonna find that out later on. What is this, a tiny scope? All right, so you can zoom in about 400% by using smartphones. This is another additional sort of device you can actually play with. You can see that each lens has its unique um, features. So let's look at this one. This is Dwarf Lab ND1 1 million and 1.25. So this is the Dwarf uh, Lab, and this is UHC uh, 1.25 uh, Lab ND uh, 1 million again. Finally, let's open up the actual Dwarf 2. So nice quality bag. So where this is, okay, so this opens up this way, and inside it, yep. This is the strap that you can use. This is the actual tripod, a good quality tripod. Whoa, okay, so this is the 64 gigabyte uh, memory card as well. Thank you for that. I mean, this is Samsung, a proper one as well. Quick um, instruction. Good weight. It looks like it's all closed down, but we got this I presume will be automatically rotating, tracking the movement. Uh, this is where you actually attach your tripod on. And um, all right, so here it is, people. This is where you plug in your USB-C um, to be able to charge the battery here, which is the dual flat battery. And if I were to take it out, not sure whether you can see it, but this actually is 5,600 uh, milliamp hour, which is pretty good actually. And it's a, one of the biggest batteries that I've seen so far. SD memory card slot here. I'm not sure whether you're allowed to move this. This is the actual lens itself. And you would basically turn on here and there's this cool feeling silver patch on it. Maybe this is designed to make the whole thing keep it cool down and the LED indicator and so on. That's pretty much it. So here in UK, we had a really terrible rainy season and I managed to film something uh, recently, which I don't think is quite good presentation, but I hope you guys will follow through where I'm getting at. So as you can see, I'm actually at the photo section and I opened up on the telescope lens point of view and the exposure time is now auto of um, one to 1000, one to 100. I have actually have no idea what this actually means, but it's changed to one to 800, which I believe at the time was the best. And then the white balance now is um, getting into, um, okay, 4,900. And the um, infrared light, which I don't understand what this is for, <laughs> but I think this is to do with night view. So I just 
basically cancelled it and then now I'm um, changing the brightness into more like um, 55, 50, 51, 53, 55. Um, I think that was a bit too bright. So then I'm starting to go down to um, 44. I think 40-ish. And then you can see that I'm now starting to zoom in by um, you know using the typical smartphone way of zooming in and um, it was pixelated. That's where I started to get confused. How do I zoom in? Because there's no sort of um, official zoom in sort of button on the app itself. Is this the best quality that I'm going to get? So then I started to focus on the sharpness. So as you can see, I have absolutely no idea how these sort of um, telescope works. So I'm trying to press every single button now, then I'm changing to astro mode. And then it's actually saying that um, astro uh, photography is now in the shooting. It's starting a preview and then it kind of froze a bit. So I don't know how long I'm supposed to wait for, but you can see on the right hand side top, it says total of 999 current 14, 15, it's going up. Um, and then I just decided to stop. So. Um, what I'm really after is something like a live point of view of a very good quality moon. But I think my brain at the time is starting to uh, tell me that maybe you can only get that quality on an astro mode and then you got to wait until that photography came up. But I, I really uh, was hoping that Dove 2 will be able to give me a really good zoomed quality see now you can see that i'm trying to zoom in again but it started to get pixelated um, i think the actual size of the moon is uh, reasonably good this is still pixelated but um, when it's in the size of a penny coin uh, from your smartphone because it's quite tiny oh it's better than any um, smartphone um, i would say um, unless it's a samsung ultra series so I, would, I was pretty happy with this. Now I started to get a bit more zoomed in, but I don't know whether this is the official way. Um, you can actually see some contour of the moon actually, and then um, moon slightly moving as well. This is really nice shot. I, I was quite pleased with that. Um, and then I, I went to the burst mo mode, which I'm not sure what that does. So I kind of stopped again and um, just usually just playing around with um, what about playing videos. See again, when you start to zoom right in to what I thought was an ideal size of a moon should be for a photography point of view, it get pixelated. So I don't know what I was doing wrong. Now I'm starting to try the auto track mode because the moon started, you know, um, I know it's a very small move of, of the moon, um, but I just wanted to track and um, somehow it was struggling. So maybe tracking the moon for the way how I'm doing definitely is not right right, right way to do. Um, but um, yeah, so that's getting all blurry. So now I went back to the, rather than auto zoom, let's zoom right in and then trying to readjust the focus. Um, but then again, I realized it was a video mode um, and then I just recorded very quickly. But yeah, again, that's the ideal size of what I wanted the moon um, live view to be, but it's all pixelated. Um, so maybe the best way of, of getting the exposure of the moon is to use the astro mode and wait until the photography process has been completed. That's how it's designed it to be. So um, yeah, you can see that I'm I'm pressing the manual plus and the minus to get the best sort of um, quality. But again, if you zoom right out, yes, it's a very crisp quality, but zoom in, it's all pixelated. Um, then again, I tried again, <laughs> focusing on the um, the gain and the all these uh, features. Um, I tried. Stupidly, I pressed the infrared light again, which is totally unnecessary in this case. And then just trying to work out what is the best way to get a decent live moving moon. Um, but I think it came to the point that I realized um, now you, I'm just going all the extreme, pressing every single button. And I think my brain at the time is starting to realize that maybe this is the best of what you can get from a live point of view. I mean, by all means, you guys could advise me what I'm doing wrong. I mean, that's main point. 
of why I'm actually uploading this video. I'm not trying to um, make this as a review, but it's more like a first impression. So again, I don't know what this is, all this is about, the FITS or TIFF. I presume that's like the image um, process. I don't know. Anyway, so you can see that all these things, uh, the Astro as well, is starting to shoot. It all of a sudden is paused. Is saying that it's a start preview so I, I was starting to get the sense that um, that's how you get a decent uh, photo I think you have to wait for the count to go all the way to 999 to get a final final shot of the moon but then again the moon itself moves all the time so how are you gonna I don't know that's something I haven't managed to reach because we had a really terrible weather and it was one random night that I managed to get um, a good relatively good shot of the moon okay so you can see that I zoom right in of the photo that I taken it was good quality but um, again um, I have no idea how the whole th this world of tech works um, so that's pretty much what I came up with so far so I'm actually at the Dwarf Lab official website uh, regards to Dwarf 2 smart telescope page and if you scroll down on the uh, customer reviews it's 4.4 based on 28 reviews so it's pretty high actually so there's a um, few very few complaints but if you look at those images that these guys taking it's really good wow look at that I didn't know that such image actually exists out of the whole universe um, and um, if you go through few pages I remember seeing an image of the moon which was um, really well taken by this individual and wow look at that that's the quality that I was actually after but it's a still image again what I'm trying to get at from this whole exercise is to get a really nice live image of the moon so I'm starting to get an impression that maybe if I stop with that astro mode and waited a few bits then uh, the image will came out like this but how do I actually achieve a live camera movement of the moon with this quality? That's what I was originally after. So as you can tell by now, I have almost zero knowledge when it comes to how to use a telescope and generate related imagery behind it. So um, I really need your help. Hence, that's why I made this video. Hence, that's why I actually bought Dwarf 2. I really want to establish myself that first step, trying to focus on the moon and get a decent imagery so that later stage I could explore the rest of the sky and so on. And technically, I should have really filmed uh, using the Dwarf 2 in an open rural field, not where I'm actually based at, which is right in the middle of the city. So I should really allow myself to travel somewhere quiet without any artificial light so I could get a really decent image of the sky. I mean, this is a very clever device. Not only it comes with auto tracking, it also has this calibration mode as well. So it automatically moves around it detects exactly where it's actually based at as well, which unfortunately I haven't shown on this video, but please do remember this is a first step, um, almost a step video exploring uh, my side of knowledge on how a telescope works. And I think this Dwarf 2 will be a fantastic tool to be able to explore my journey on this side. So please do comment below how I could use it on this stage and I'll be really grateful and I will update my process later on. So overall, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope somehow this video explained how Dwarf 2 works, but um, please do comment below and I'll try to come back to you as soon as possible. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.